Hello everyone, Tom Morley here from FOSS 365 and welcome to Spaceball, the tutorial or otherwise known as creating 3D assets in Blender and importing them into Godot 3.0 game engine. That's a mouthful. I like Spaceballs, the tutorial, much better. So the first tutorial is going to be on creating the 3D assets in Blender 3D. So let's get started. Let's open the key monitor so you can see what keys I'm pressing. Let's open Blender. And I think I will load the factory settings so that we're all on the same page. And in this tutorial, we are actually going to use the default cube. So I guess that's kind of cool. First thing we need to do is turn on snap during transform and absolute grid alignment. What that will do is, let's say I hit the G key to move this, you see it's going to move it and snap it to the grid. This will help us keep everything in alignment so when we separate it, it will import into Godot and we can create the game levels without misalignment of our 3D objects. Alright, so press the tab key, go into edit mode, turn on our faces, face select, going to right click on that face there. I'm going to press E and Y to move it out to. And I think I'm going to do the same thing on this side, E and Y to move it out to. Now I want to separate this one, one piece right here because we're going to actually go below the floor with the, this piece here because this will end up being the floor piece but I think I need it to have some depth because it's going to be like a spaceport and you'll, you'll see the the edge of the floor so what we are uh, what we're going to do is we're going to select all four faces now you could do that just by holding down the shift key and selecting the faces that you want. But that's kind of the slow way to do it. Fast way to do it is to hold down the shift and the alt key and click right on the edge. And what that'll do, right click on the edge, is that will select all four of the faces for you. Right? So now I want to separate that. So I'm going to press the P key to separate it by my selection. Now that I separated that, I'm going to press the tab key, which puts us into object mode so I can select that inner box. And now I'm going to move it by pressing G and Y, and I'm going to move it, or not Y, sorry, X. I'm going to move it um, up four. I'm just going to kind of get it out of the way because that's going to be our floor. I have to select the object, press tab to edit mode, shift and alt right click to select all four of those but then don't forget you need this face too so hold the shift key down and select that one last now press the P to separate it by selection there now if I click tab to go into object mode we have three objects that one this one and the one over here let's start on this side so let's press the tab key to go into edit mode select that face E and Y and move it to now I want this side to actually go to the floor so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select this face I'm going to press G and Z and go down one but then I want this edge here to go right down to the floor right down to the floor the bottom so what I'm going to do is change into edge select mode I'm going to select it by right clicking G and Z to go down one now when I go down one, you'll see it's going to basically overlay on what's already there. Click on Vertex Select and let's click A to deselect everything, A again, and now that's going to select the whole thing. And what we're going to do is we're going to click Remove Doubles and you'll see that it did remove too. So now it basically welded those corners down. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm going to press A again to deselect everything and I want to uh, come down here click face select again grab that face extrude it 
y two and I want this to be a ramp and then a straight floor so I'm going to select this edge I'm going to press G and Z to bring it down there we go so now I go from the floor up one ramp to the first level then a ramp and then I want a second level so I'm going to grab the face again use the mouse and zoom out a little bit E and Y move it to again so now I've got the first ramp first floor second ramp second floor now maybe I want uh, a way to turn left or right up here on the second floor so let's create another box here by extruding in the y-axis to selected E to extrude it must not have taken X to move it there we go and I'm going to do the same thing on this side E and X two, and maybe one here E and X or Y by two two there we go so now you've got it so that you can go from the floor all the way up here and if we want to we can create ramps off from either of these sides that are here and that's fine so the next thing I want to do is I want maybe just one that will end you know what though I think I can do that over on the other side so let's do this let's go into object mode and get rid of this let's delete that one now let's not delete it actually I think I want maybe a curve on that side so let's select that object tab key to go into edit mode we have faces selected let's see safe let's extrude this by on the y-axis by two select this one let's extrude that on the X axis by two. There we go. So now I have a turn. I have a four way ramp and I have a turn. Okay. Because this second level ramp will connect to this, this level here. So I think that'll be fine. So what we want to do now is we want to create a bevel on the edges. So let's go ahead and select, let's do edge select here. And I want to select that one. Actually, let's go back into object mode. And I think I want to grab that object and this object here by shift clicking, shift clicking, so that both of them are selected. And I want to join them. So I forget the the key, but we can press space and type in join. There's object join. Just click on it. Now what that did is it joined these two objects together. So now we can press tab and go into edit mode and grab edge select here and start moving around it. This might be better if we went into wireframe mode so that we can see things a little bit better. So I grab that one, this one, that one. I want to basically go around it, but I don't want to select this edge here or that one. I'm going to do the same thing around here want that one and this one I want those that one that one that one grab those that one and that one okay so basically what I've done is I'm I want to leave the ends alone. I don't want them to be beveled, but I want the rest of the edges to be beveled. So now that this is all one object and I'm in edit mode, right? All those edges are selected. Now I can press control B and I can move down a little bit and it starts to create a bevel on my object. Now if I use the middle mouse button and I scroll it up, you'll see it, it starts to basically loop cut or edge cut our object and what I want to do is I want there to be a total of three new faces on the edge 
So once you've got three faces, you just kind of get it where you want it. And once you get it where you want it, press the left mouse button. And all of these edges should be the same amount. So when I chop these up, this second level ramp should connect to this end over here if I turn it around. So be, by making it all one object and doing the beveling all together, everything should fit together once we put it into the Godot engine. Um, we don't want this floor to be beveled because the floor is actually going to be on the bottom. We don't need that beveled. Uh, I might bevel the, the underneath of it so that it looks better, but I doubt it. I think for, for a beginner's tutorial, we're just going to leave it like this. So now if I go back into solid mode and I press the tab key to go back into object mode, you can see that it put on a nice little bevel on the edge there. But what I'd like is I would like for this bevel to be smooth and my flat areas to be flat. Right now it looks like if I click on smooth shading for my object, you'll see it does all kinds of weird things. I get kind of weird shapes and shadows and things don't quite look right. But I need that to be smooth because if I press flat, I don't want it to have that flat edge. So what you need to do is you need to tab and go into edit mode while these bevels are selected and come down to shading and UVs. And we want those faces, the ones that are selected, to be smooth. So if you click on smooth and then tab out of it, you'll see that just the edge is smooth, not the rest of the object. So that's exactly what we're looking for. And that'll give us a better, better view. Now here's a tip. My first tip of the tutorial is there's a way to get a better view of what things look like. If you click on the plus here and you go down to your shading area and you click on ambient occlusion, watch when you click that, like right here in the corner and like right in here when I click ambient occlusion. You see that? It's basically putting in some shadow and what you can do is you can increase the strength of that as well as the distance that it that it goes out and that will help you to kind of see what's going on and I use this all the time in my work to help me see where my faces are and where everything is happening it also works when you're not in just solid mode but when you're also when you're in material mode of course there's no materials right now but there will be so Let's go back into solid mode again. I'm going to leave that ambient occlusion on because I like that. It helps out quite a bit. And then we can just drag that back over. All right. So what do I have? I have the objects that I need. I think the next thing that I need to do is probably get my floor set up, which is this box right here. So let's highlight that. Let's G. And X, bring it back to where we need it. Oop. G and X, move it over to there, press the left mouse button. Now remember, we didn't bevel the edge, and that's because this, this box is going to be underneath all of our different 3D assets that are above the ground. So what we need is G and Z on this. Move it down to and you, you'll see that's what we're going to do is that will be the floor and um, we don't need it to be that thick I guess right so what we'll do is we will go into edit mode go into face mode right click select that G and Z move it up um, I'm going to left click and lock it in there that's still a little bit too thick for me for my taste so we're we're basically going to fight the fact that we've got absolute grid alignment on so what will happen is again make sure that bottom is selected and if we press G and Z so that we're only moving in the Z axis you see that I'm either going to go I'm going to go right from my first unit right to unit zero you know there's no in between but if you hold the shift key down then you can go in smaller increments so I need to go up probably about I think there is fine um, yeah I like that 
So we're gonna we're gonna have our floor basically be that thick. You can do whatever thickness you want, but that's that's what I'm gonna go with. All right. I'm going to hold the shift key down and middle mouse button kind of align things a little bit better so I'm spinning around the, the entire object here. So now I think the next thing is we need to talk about how we're going to create surfaces for these. So right now we're in Blender Render but I tend to work now in the Cycles render. And I do that because the Cycles engine now has, if you go over here and click on the material, click on Use Nodes, it now has a PBR-like, which is physical-based rendering, and that's what the Godot 3.0 engine is, a physical-based physical rendering engine. It has a shader in here that, that basically matches the way we can assign materials in Godot. So what we want is we want the principled shader. So the principled shader is going to have all of the things that we expect in a PBR and game engine, like metallic and roughness and our regular base uh, surface color, as well as some other things. So they're already, we get them for free in the principled shader. So it's kind of cool that it has it. This is going to make our work a little bit easier. So now that I have the floor, the first thing that I guess I want to do is I want to texture it. 